Alright. We still have one quadrant we have not even started to explore yet. And that quadrant would be the Western Zone. Which is directly across from the Space Zone. Gotta watch my HP, though. Alright. <laughs> and now they're wearing cowboy hats. Not as intimidating, huh? Alright, we got the crazy castle this way. That's the top of Wumpa's wigwam, if you couldn't recognize it. We've also got a gondola ride here, and the Cactus of Strength. Let's check out the Cactus of Strength, shall we? Ring the bell to win a top prize! Yeah, so... For this one... This is an interesting game. We gotta hit the bell at the top. Ground pound? Oh, we are weak. Um, ground pound? Ground pound? <laughs> we can climb up to the top. Maybe we ground pound from the very top. Well, that didn't work. Maybe, maybe we'll come back to that one later. <laughs> when time runs out, uh, the, the little bell will go all the way back to the bottom. There are a couple of notes hidden behind these doors here. Climb up here. Forever. Can we high jump up? No, we can't high jump up there. So we gotta high jump up onto the door. Then do a jump hover to grab onto here. And there's a Jinjo over here. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. It's another red Jinjo. We are, only are missing two red Jinjos. Man, we found a lot of them. Give me my HP, please, and thank you. Alright, now we're gonna grip grab this side. Watch out for the Snapdragons. That was actually convenient that we got one of those. We were running low on HP. Alright, here's Wumpa's Wigwam and another warp pad. We are not going to... We're not going to go to Wumba just yet. For one, we don't have a Globo. And number two, there's still more to explore before I want to uh, use the, the Wumba transformation. Alright, this is where we saw in the Jiggy Wiggy uh, challenges, the Crazy Castle Stockade. There's a ginger just kind of vying out for us to pick up. So, there are a couple of things. Uh, if a Jinjo is just kind of in a line, line out in an obvious place, it's probably a Minjo. Another way to check if it's a Jinjo or a Minjo is to shoot it with an egg. If it gets knocked back like that, then it's a Minjo. If it's a Jinjo, the egg will pass right through it. Hey, here's the last Jam Jar Silo. We only need 170 notes. Forget it, punk! You won't be needing this flea bag with you when you learn this one! Why, you cheeky? Yeah, so that's basically his way of saying Banjo alone needs to talk to him in order to get a new move. Because that's a new move for just Banjo having split up. The pump room. Hey, guess what, folks? It's time for our favorite grenade eggs. This leads us to a hollow honeycomb piece, but we can also go back here. To the ca crazy castle pump room. So you see these little switches. There's a switch that has Banjo on it, and then on the other side, there's a switch that has Kazooie on it. We need just Banjo to step on the Banjo switch, and just Kazooie to step on the Kazooie switch. And doing those at the same time will cause something good to happen. So I feel like this is where Banjo-Tooie fell into a little bit of the Donkey Kong 64 syndrome, where you've got, like, five different playable characters, but you really only need them to hit specific switches that only they can hit in order to access new areas. Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie's definitely not as egregious about that as DK64, but there's still parts where it's just as like, wow, that, that could have been implemented better. Alright, there's a sign up here. To ring the bell requires three different strikes. What the heck? I'll teach you to make a fool out of me, pickpocket Pete. I don't even know what his name is. 
I just call them the pickpocket employees or the guys. All right, crazy castle stockade. So here are some split up pads. So again, just Banjo can't attack, so we got to avoid the enemies at all costs. Which is going to be a pain once the Minjo is, uh, goes after us. We're going to have to jump around him, and now we can get the final move for Jam Jars. <laughs> Wait a roundabout, walk around there, uh, son. Pack Whack! Banjo's now got an empty pack, so why not use it to attack? Just press B and round it swings, bumps and bruises to baddies it brings. That'll be all. Dismissed! So now with this new move, if we press B with just Banjo... Uh, no, I did not want to talk to Jam Jars again. We'll swing our pack around. It's a powerful attack, and we can also use it in midair. This is also Banjo's only method of attack when he's by himself. One really cool thing it can do, and I don't think this was intentional, you can jump, pack whack, and then jump again out of the pack whack, basically giving Banjo a double jump. So, for example, like, we go up this barrel, and we can just jump up, but we can also do jump, pack whack, jump. Alright, so now that Banjo is in the pump room, you'll see these little glowing clouds. These are swap clouds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the Banjo switch. When you're standing on one of these glowing patches as just Banjo or just Kazooie, if you press A, you'll switch to the other one. That's what a swap cloud is. So now that we're just Kazooie, we're also gonna go into the pump room. And with just Kazooie, we're gonna step on the other switch. And holding both of these down at the same time will cause the Pump Master 2 to start inflating that uh, rubber bouncy castle in the middle of the stockade. And that also creates a shock jump disc at one of the sides of the walls. That'll be used later on. So now we could rejoin Banjo and Kazooie together, but there's actually something we can do in the castle that we can only do with just Kazooie. So that's where the disc is. The entrance to the castle is actually not right next to the entrance. It's on the opposite side from the shock jump disc. Alright, so now we here we are in the Crazy Castle lobby. So this is, Crazy Castle is just a really cool bouncy castle. So you'll see there are two doors here. This one, if you're not just Kazooie, will be blocked off saying you can only be enter with just Kazooie. And then this one is blocked off and we need to be Banjo and Kazooie together in order to do that one. So let's run into the one of just Kazooie first. Hoop hurry game. Welcome to the Hoop Hurry Challenge! You have 60 seconds in which to score 30 points. Do you want to hear the rules? Sure. Pretty simple, really. Jump through the hoops. Blue ones are worth three points. Green ones get you two points. And red ones just one point. Easy, huh? Let's give it a go. That's nice of Grunty. Ready, three, two, one, go! So we're gonna grab these super shoes in the middle, and then we're gonna have to jump through as many rings as possible. So ideally, you want to jump through the high-valued ones. As they give you the most points. Duh. That said, if there's a red ring right in my pathway, I'm going to jump through it. The blue rings can be... Again, the more... The higher-valued the rings, the smaller they are, and thus the trickier they are to jump through. Especially with the camera not exactly being phenomenal. But this game isn't too challenging. We only need 30 points and we already have that. Or we already almost have that. There have also been some crazy people who have actually managed to beat this without jumping. Because you can actually just run through the red rings. And you can also potentially run through the green rings as well. But that, the angle on that's a lot more precise. Easy game. The minigames in this world are actually legitimately really fun. No! You can't have! You scored enough points to win my hoop hurry prize! So that'll create a jiggy at the top of the crazy castle, and that's what we need the shock jump disc in order to reach. Do you want to play again? No, there's, there's no advantage to playing again. There's no second prize. 
Yeah, Banjo Tooie has a lot of mini games, and I'd say most of them are kind of questionable, but like all of the ones in Ban in the Witchy World are pretty awesome. Another reason why it's such a great world in my mind. I also just love the amusement park aesthetic. It's fantastic. And then the other way to switch to the other characters to step on their uh, part of the swap pad and then swap back. Ouch. I love the double jump ability of the pack whack. I don't think it's intentional, but it definitely helps out. <laughs> Alright, back to Banjo and Kazooie at the same time. Now we're gonna go into Crazy Castle again to do the other minigame. Yeah, as you can see, it says just Kazooie. But now this way is open up. And this is where we're gonna see the airborne a egg game. Balloon Burst game. Welcome to the Balloon Burst Challenge! You have 60 seconds in which to score 50 points! Do you want to hear the rules? A lot more points needed for this one. It's real simple. Shoot the balloons. Blue ones are worth three points. Green ones get you two points. And red ones just one point. Now let's see what you can do. Ready, three, two, one, go. So here, after we get the aerial egg aim, we'll be in first person mode. And we have unlimited eggs, so we can just kind of go flying around and mash, uh, holding down Z to shoot in every direction. And this game's actually really fun. An aerial egg game is great. It really makes you feel like you're a fighter pilot. You can't do this challenge until you learn aerial egg game from Jim Rose in the space zone, though. And again, if this was in Banjo Kazooie, it would probably be pretty bad controls, because the flying controls in Banjo Kazooie weren't that great, but Banjo Kazooie really helped the flying controls a lot and made them a lot better. So this is actually legit really fun. Again, you are slowly descending, so make sure you occasionally press A to gain some height. So you don't hit the ground. Oh, this is easy, Grunty. This is easy. Oh, it's so unfair! You scored enough points to win my Balloon Burst prize! Now we can just collect both jiggies in a single go. Do you want to play again? No. Also, hey, did Madame Grunty's ever reopen? Uh -oh. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Alright, I like the bouncy castle. That's a cool area. Both the minigames are quite fun. Also, I believe that is literally everything we can do in Crazy Castle Stockade. We don't even have to come back here as Mumbo or uh, the Wumba Transformation. Alright, that's the Balloon Burst Prize. And that's the Hoop Hurry Prize. Two pretty easy jiggies. Most of, that, most of the problem for that one is just inflating the, uh, the castle in the first place. But as you can see, yeah, the Jiggies are a bit more involved to get in this one. Alright. So the sign in the pump room said that the Cactus of Strength, we need three different types of attacks in order to hit the switch. This took me ages to figure out, because it is incredibly unintuitive what you need to do. So, okay. the first You need three different attacks. So the first one is obviously the ground pound. Second one is also obvious. It's the build drill. But what's the third one? So, I thought, oh hey, you need to get the Heggy move, the smash here. Nope. Believe it or not, I kid you not, you poop a grenade egg. It blows up and magically makes it go up to the top. That Jiggy is so stupid. There is nothing to indicate. The only thing that would indicate it is that this is kind of shaped like an explosion. But that doesn't make sense that an explosion would push the switch. At all. Very dumb. If anything, doing landing from a high height would make more sense, but nope. I call foul on that one. That's one of the few jiggies in the game where I'm just like, really? That's that's just stupid. Alright. Really? You didn't grab on. 
For realsies. I just wanna- I wanna turn into the Humble Wumba transformation. It's a good one. Like, the- the last two Humble Wumba transformations have been very lackluster. This one is legit fun and actually very useful. And we're gonna need it to open up the rest of the world. Well, most of the rest of the world. And I do believe that the Globo is just inside her wigwam. Sure enough. Thanks for just giving that to me. You have Globo. Want to give to Humba? I mean, this was yours to begin with, but sure. Sure, I'll just throw it in. Magic ready. Jump in Wumba pool. Alright, this is one of my favorite transformations. Wumba called this Van. Van carries much coins. Use control stick to move and press B for horn. So the Van is actually- it can, it can control a little weirdly, but it's like invincible. You can just kill enemies by running over them. There are also these Van doors that you've probably seen around. If you honk your horn, it'll open up. So some of these will give you shortcuts throughout the different parts of the land. We can also run over these, uh, slot machines that were in Destructible before. <laughs> you got a ticket for Conga's Big Top. Hi, friend. Actually, wait. Now that I gave Soggy the fries... Okay, she only ate one of my five. Can I get more? Sorry, but I'm afraid I'm not allowed to serve your kind. Racist. I mean, I guess a van is not a race. Wow. Prejudiced much? There's our second ticket. <laughs> Pay here to enter the fearsome furnace of the inferno. Cool. Pay to win. The ride is now open. Ooh, this room is kind of terrifying. Alright, well as the van, we're gonna wait for it to open up, jump on through. Welcome to the Inferno. So the Inferno is just a giant spiral slide with all these fake flames, except they also use real lava. I don't know how they're allowed to get away with this, and apparently the van can drive through the real lava no problem, which is hilarious. But that will legitimately burn you if you fall into it. No wonder they have an appalling safety record. <laughs> Little wonder. Like, seriously. Open up this door. And we get our next Cheeto page. The Cheeto page is stored in the Inferno area. Thank goodness it didn't burn to a crisp. <laughs> oh, man. And here's the last of the kids. So this last kid is, um, wow. He put on a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> the kid, the other two kids looked like just basically how they did in the first banjo, where they all basically looked the exact same. This guy's a lot fatter now. Sorry, but mom said I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. <laughs> but I've got candy in this van. <laughs> nah, that's that's good of you. Uh, I think I think he's I think he's actually groggy because he's definitely a little on the groggy side. Maybe not. These are hotheads, and they are a huge pain in the butt. Because they're effectively indestructible, and they will hurt you if you're not the van. The van is literally invincible, but... And here's the final warp pad, and this is where Mumbo's skull is. And wow, Mumbo, way to make your skull look like Satan's face. Holy cow. Let's go inside. <laughs> 